Snooker Basics video course is a snooker training material to help you transform your snooker game and take to another level. Improve aiming, overall technique, cubo control, rest plays, snooker escapes and make proper snookers. Interested? If yes, so don't wait and order a Snooker Basics video course today. World champion, under 21 and 1997 world champion. And Kenny is one of the most accomplished players in the snooker history and uh, famous for his tactical play and brick building. So, uh, great to have you here. My pleasure, my pleasure. Thank you for having me. Yeah, it's uh, good to learn from the best. Uh, when I was a kid and right now, sometimes I watch your play. And uh, I, as a coach, as a player, I always learn new things. Yeah. And uh, that match which you played in 2003 against Paul Hunter was a classic classic match, which was amazing. Yeah. Yeah, they just uh, showed on BBC there last week uh, a replay of some of the Christmas classics. And... Uh, yeah, it was amazing to come back from uh, such a large sort of, uh, you know, uh, margin to come back and beat Paul Hunter. He was playing, you know, some great snooker that year. He was Masters champion, of course, twice. And um, he was a great top player. Uh, but to beat him 17-16 was, I think it was probably after winning the World Championships, without doubt, my best match, yeah. So, how did you feel when you were losing? Uh, what was your mental state at uh, that time when you were just said, okay, it's time to go make a comeback? Yeah, I mean, I just, uh, I went into the last session and I thought, well, look, at, it looks like I'm going to lose. But I said to myself, don't give it to them easy, you know, make them work hard for it. Uh, go out and just like play really as hard as you can and uh, see what happens you know win the first couple of frames and then uh, you know try and uh, make him work for his victory if he's going to get it and that's all I did I just went out played really tough match play snooker and the pressure changed for me over to Paul and uh, it's, uh, just every frame I kept coming back coming back coming back and then he started to get nervous and then create opportunities for myself and and that's how it unfolded it's amazing accomplishment because other guys uh, uh, in that occasion were like uh, too much pressure and yeah. you just hold your pressure very well so my question is how did you develop such a good mental game throughout the years throughout your career oh, yeah, that's a good question uh, to be honest I always, uh, I always would say to myself, and I say it to my son who plays, who plays sport now, he plays tennis, that all you can do when you go out is just give it 100%. If you give it 100%, you know, play as hard as you can, then when you come off the table, you don't have any, you don't have any guilt about your, about your game. You know that you, you gave everything, and I always, I always played like that. I always played with that emotion, about that passion. And, That's great. Um, I, I try and fight for every ball, for every opportunity, and never give up, never ever give up. So how was how was your practice routine during that your A day when you were like number two in the world and you were winning a lot? So how was your practice routine? What did you on the practice table so you could manage to have a, such a high level concentration, especially at the Crucible Masters? I think, of the day? I, think I think when I was playing during that time, I had a lot of uh, I used to play a lot of matches myself, you know, I'd play, like in 97, Ronnie and I would practice every day together, you know, Ronnie O'Sullivan and myself, we lived, we lived quite close to each other in London, so we would play every day, and in the club that I played in London, we had a lot of good players, so there was always good matches going on, and you were very, very sharp, you know, and I used to, I used to be in there every day, like for six, seven, eight hours, you know, and uh, playing a lot of good players, and uh, keeping your sharp, keeping your focus, because if you lost, you know, it was the winner would stay on the table, the loser would come off. So you never wanted to lose, and that that would have helped me through all those uh, the years of the nineties and that. I just want to say that uh, I like your Q action. It's so such a smooth Q action. Mm -hmm. So who gave you that fundamentals? Uh, did you have any coach back in your uh, childhood, uh, or just developed by yourself? I had a. I sort of had a, a coach when I was about 13 to about 16, but never really. The coach 
I sort of developed my own cue action. He never sort of got me to cue in a certain way. That was just my own my own development from watching players and, and trying to replicate what they were doing, you know, on the back swing and trying to deliver the cue after, you know, after three sort of wagons, as we say, you know, one, two, three, and then hit it. And then, so I just tried to develop it myself without getting a very, very a, a technical coach. Rodney mentioned in his uh, publicly that he was copying you when in his early days, like when he was 16, 17, he said that you were like a role model for him because yeah, you yeah. were playing quite a good standard already at that time. Yeah. So that's a huge thing, you know? Yeah, it is. Yeah. I mean, well, I used to, as I said, I used to play with Ronnie from his age of, uh, from 12 years of age up until, you know, in his 20s you know i was playing i was playing and practicing with him so he would have picked up a lot of stuff off me and tried to and then he developed his own cue action you know so he, he sort of he would pick up things off me or other players that he would have played so but because we were playing uh, a lot against each other i suppose he would have picked up a lot of the tactics you know a good safety game as well as uh Q action and trying to deliver the cue as well in, in a straight line. Great insights. And also, I would like to know when was your A day? Of course, when you won the, in 1997 the World Championships, probably it was one of the most memorable moments. Yeah. But I just want to know how did you felt during that whole tournament? How keep you? How did you keep consistency? Uh, I think sport is all about. Uh, confidence you know and, and as you said consistency and putting yourself in the frame uh, and uh, like that year i wasn't that confident going into the world championship but my confidence sort of built up during the world championship and from then on um you know i sort of became uh, even though i was in the, the, the top players and in the top like you know four or five six players in the world uh, for about eight or ten years um I sort of developed, winning the world championship sort of gave me a great sort of uh, air of confidence, you know, and uh, and I just sort of loved, I loved sort of, I knew I could play against the best, you know, against Hendry at his best or Ronnie at his best, Higgins at his best, uh, I would compete against them and play and beat them, you know, and I beat them and I beat them in, in semi-finals, finals of tournaments and uh, yeah, they were like for, for about 10 years, they were they were my best years, you know. Of course, uh, and especially at that time, he won five times in a row world championship. So you, how to say, destroyed that row, and it was incredible that you did that, especially in the final. Yeah, yeah, and uh, you know, to, he was gone for like six tournaments in a row, six world championships in a row. It's an incredible record, and he it was like 30 matches and all. So he'd won 29 matches in a row. Uh, so to beat him and uh, to beat him in, in the final of the World Championship, that was like the icing on the cake, you know. Amazing, amazing. So of course, I keep, uh, that... I keep reminding, I keep reminding him about it every time we meet. <laughs> By the way, my coach Alan Bell, maybe you know him, said uh, to give you a greetings. Oh, thank you. Yeah, tell him I said hello. Nice guy. Yeah, yeah, we chatting a lot recently because as a coach and as a player, I want to, yeah. you know, improve small details in my game. Yeah. And yeah. Uh, no, no, he's, a good, he's, a, he's a good coach. He's knowledgeable, uh, Alan. You know, he's very knowledgeable. Worked with Jimmy White and that. I, I know him very well. Yeah. Yeah, a natural coach, you know. Yeah. So. Right. I, I would like to know how your daily routine looks right now. Of course, there is Corona, there is no snooker. Yeah, it's very you, difficult. You do your push-ups? <laughs> I do my push-ups. I've been doing push-ups every day, up to 45 push-ups now. Um, but um, yeah, I've been just not doing much, just spending time at home, uh, doing a lot of dog walking and a bit of push-ups and uh, just you know, spending time at home, basically, because when you're on the road quite a bit, I mean, that's one of the good things about this, that I've been able to spend a lot of time at home with my young son and that. And uh, But uh, I miss the snooker. I miss the World Championships. And uh, I, I hope our snooker clubs are closed here, so there's, we can't practice snooker. So I'm hoping they will be open very soon that we can get back to practicing and hopefully the World Championships will happen in July. Yeah. So uh, you are not as young as you were like 20 years ago. 
<laughs> so how did you feel about your game right now compare when you were like number two in the world what what is different right now uh, what's different well I'm, I, i'd like to be i'd like to go back 20 years i know that but i think uh, you'd, you'd like to have i think the, the, the you know the winning the matches the confidence and stuff like that is is very very important part of the game and uh But sometimes, you know, when I, I sometimes matches the uh, players that I've beaten, you know, that I, I still think I can, I can um, beat some of the top players on my day, you know. But I just have to be a bit more consistent. Because you recently you do commentary, you do journalism, and you do that very well. So maybe this is like another hobby for you, and it's, it could be it's a good thing, but it could be a little bit distraction. Yeah. Uh, Uh, possibly, but I still, uh, I still like to practice. You know, I still practice three or four hours a day. I still like, still like doing the practice. I love the game. Uh, I love playing in the seniors as well. Uh, I haven't played this year, but uh, I do like playing in those senior events. And uh, I don't like the traveling as much, you know, as much as I would have liked 20 years ago. But uh, I love the game. I'll always love the game. I always love playing it. You never lose your sort of competitive spirit. Uh, But uh, the sharpness, I would like to get back to. There's no doubt about that. It's of course because you are a very good match player, so you have all all the shots. So mm. it's just a little bit more, as you said, confidence, concentration, and you can have a good role in the in the tournament. Yeah, yeah. Why not? Why not? Uh, so with whom you are practicing when you are practicing? Well, what are your practice partners? Uh, well, I've been I've been practicing. Uh, I'm in mainly now in Ireland. Uh, I've practiced with Fergal O'Brien or uh, Sean Murphy has moved to Dublin now, so he's uh, he's he can be a, he's a practice partner for me. But I do a lot of like solo practice, you know, or practice with uh, my friends, um, you know, and they help me. They watch my practice and tell me what you know different things or what could be doing better. You know, and practice a bit more. So, um, yeah, that's that's mainly what my usual routines would be. Yeah. Okay. And um, can you tell me a story about the, uh, what, for your, in your opinion, what is the best practice uh, partner you have, have ever have played against? We all know Ronnie Henry, but in, on practice, there's like di different environment. Yeah, yeah. In in practice, yeah, it's different environment. I mean, I, I practice against them all. I practice. Steve Davis used to come and practice with me. Uh, I practice with Jimmy White, Stephen Hendry, John Higgins, uh, Ronnie O'Sullivan. Uh, I practice with a lot of great players. Um, and um, I must say, when you're playing players like that, you know, and you might play them for 20 quid or 50 quid, you know, just for a bit of bite, a bit of a, just to have something at the end of it, to play for something. That's the, they're, they're the best form of practice is the match play. Um, but uh, they've all been great and I've all learned, learned from the likes of Davis and Jimmy White and Stephen Hendry. And indeed, I've learned from Ronnie O'Sullivan as well over the years. So they've all been great practice partners. Amazing. If you want to improve your aiming, cue action, cubo control mental game, I can help you to take your snooker game to the next level. Snooker coaching benefits live online coaching. Improve your snooker knowledge. Discover a technique which suits you the best. Have a decent strategic tactical game. Detailed practice plans, analysis, mental toughness and calmness under pressure. Just text me your name, country, and what do you want to improve to my WhatsApp number to Willushul Tebert, a professional snooker coach. Don't wait and book an online or live snooker coaching session now. So, what made you a biggest? What, which kind of player made you a biggest influence in your game? What What oh, you said? Uh, okay. Well, I, I, when I saw Alex Higgins play back in the 80s, uh, I loved. I wanted to play snooker, you know. So I. I I didn't play the way he could play, but he inspired me to play snooker. He drew me to the game. And because of Alex Higgins and seeing him play, I wanted to play snooker. So he was he would have been my inspiration. But I I could never I could never be like Alex Higgins. He liked to drink too much. <laughs> and he was a little bit crazy, but uh, but he was a fantastic player to watch, brilliant to watch. Yeah, and uh, like some like um, fans, they think that his question wasn't great. But when you look to the actual fact, the way he was timing the ball, yeah. he hit the ball at his age really with smoothly. Beautiful, beautiful to watch, and and very entertaining. You know, he pull off some great shots. 
Uh, a bit like Judd Trump today, you know, but Judd Trump is a lot more consistent. But Higgins was a, you know, for me as a kid, he was a phenomenon, you know, he was just mesmerizing, like a Messi, you know, like today on the football field. Like, yeah, George Best, like, Messi. George yeah. Best, exactly like George Best, yeah. It's like, uh, it's interesting about Judd Cash and like he has a flick in his wrist. So he, this yeah. is how he generates uh, a lot of power. Yeah. yeah, amazing the amount of power he can generate. And he, he, he looks like, I mean, if you were a coach, you wouldn't want to coach your son or your player uh, to play like Judd Trump because it's impossible to coach because he comes across the ball. He aims on one side and hits on the but other he's side. Timing, uh, he's timing but the best timing, in the world. His timing is amazing. And the way, and also, the timing and getting through the ball at the pace he gets through it is is just incredible to watch. Yeah, because also like Stuart Bingham, he doesn't have the strictest cue action, but he's somehow a beautiful ball striker. Yeah. So yeah, absolutely. Uh, be- be- yeah. Beautiful, beautiful cue action. I love to see. Mm-hmm. And uh, you know, like um, right now, there's a a trend that you have to have an absolute straight cue if you want to be a good player, and no. I don't believe that. No, no, not at all. Not at all. Not I've, everybody. Not everybody can be the same and can have just like a perfect pendulum swing. I yeah. think you have to adapt. You know, you adapt your own cue action to what's what you what's best for you. You know, and you try and make the most of it because you're the one who's on the table every day practicing. So you have to adapt your own, and that's why there's so many different cue actions. You know, and and they're all just as good as each other. Yeah. So so I am as a coach, I'm all about the natural coaching. You know, I don't yeah. like to put people in the boxes. I have to watch no. the person. And yeah. then by watching him, I want to him uh, give you a guidance what he can do to has to have his natural style. Absolutely. Like, Absolutely. Yeah. And you have to you have to change the basic things. If they're doing basic things wrong, you have to change them. But it's about, as you said, the ball striking, getting through the ball uh, and, and also trying to deliver in a straight line. The straight line is very important. You know? Uh, so no matter how you get to that straight line and get through the ball, you, once you get through the ball in a straight line, that's the most important thing. Um, I notice when if we talk about the best in the best in the business, like uh, Mark Sobe, you know, he's not the most natural cue action players in the world, but his routine, the way he does every single shot the same, is yeah. just incredible. Yeah, it is. Yeah, yeah. And that's well, why he's so uh, that's why he's so consistent. But also, Mark Selby, as well as his cue action. Uh, he's got an incredible temperament, you know, incredible uh, head for the game, strategy, and also uh, he's got a lot of uh, a big heart, you know, when he plays the game. So uh, all, when you roll all that into one, it's very, very uh, good combination. So what do you think about the future stars? Who is going to dominate in uh, five, ten years? Uh, um, that's a good question. I mean, you know, I'd like to see uh, someone like, Luca Brassell move up to the next level. You know, very talented player, but not, you know, Jack Lizowski as well. He's another very talented player. Uh, I think Karen Wilson uh, is is going to be a, a very steady player. He's going to be the new sort of Mark Selby in that mold. Um, and I think you've got some of the young Chinese players. Like, I like, um, um, what's the kid's name now? Of course. Zing Tong? Yeah, Yan Bin Tao, Zing Tong. Excellent, yeah. And Zhu Yulong, very, very good. For me, like Zin Tong is the most natural out of yes. the three, but he doesn't have that good shot selection as top, no, top, top he guy. Doesn't have, he doesn't have a good tactical brain. He has to learn a lot up here. Uh, if he learns that quickly, then he will become uh, a lot more consistent and could possibly win more tournaments than the other two. Whereas the other two have got a good tactical brain, but don't have the same sort of cue power or natural sort of uh, ability that Zing Tong has, you know. But those three players from the Chinese community are very, very strong. So what do you think about recent Ding's form? Of course, he won the UK Championship. It was an amazing tournament for him, but he somehow, because maybe of lack of motivation, maybe uh, because he lost his confidence, what happened? What do you think about think, him? Yeah, well, I suppose a lot of things in Ding's life... Uh, you know, he's, he's, he's a family man now and, and uh, you know, maybe he doesn't have the motivation. He likes to spend a bit more time in China. Maybe he doesn't. Sometimes he, he feels, you look at him and you don't think he has the same 
fight in him or motivation like some of the other players. If he did, I think, you know, he's one of the top players in the world, you know? So uh, I would like to see him come back to that level, you know, when he played Max Selby in the final of the World Championships and lost, but he lost in a very, very uh, high quality match. Um, I think if Dean got back to real hunger and grind like he used to maybe 10 years ago, I think he, he'd still be, a, a, you know, one of the best players in the world. Uh, when I watch his game, his question, I mean, that kind of question requires lots of practice. Yeah. Because because it's not as long as Ronin's or Trump's, so maybe he needs, because he has such a good uh, close cubo control and yeah. he's not a power player, so no. maybe that, uh, maybe his question is, uh, it's, it's a little bit like manufactured correction, so he needs to take a uh, lot of care when he's practicing. Yeah, so he needs to practice a bit more, you know, so, yeah, but he's still a wonderful uh, cueist, and uh, uh, as you Isn't said, his cue, his cue ball control is fantastic. He's great, great to watch. Okay, so my question is right now, do you enjoy in commentary or like throughout, uh, throughout this 10 yeah, years? I do, I do. I love the commentary. I have great time uh, with, the, with the other lads doing the commentary, you know, on the BBC, Dennis yeah. Taylor, John Birgo, Stephen Hendry, John Parrott, Steve Davis, and now Alan McManus. We, we're, we're like, a, you know, like a family, really. You know, Hazel is just fantastic to work with. You know, Seema now, is, is, she's lovely as well. And it's just a big family. And uh, I miss them now this year, like, but hopefully, fingers crossed that we'll be all there in July and in, in, uh, at the Crucible. Yeah, crazy times. You never know what, when it's going to be, like when next time we're going to have a tournament. Hopefully, Crucible, we're going to have uh, the end of the July. Yeah. If it's not yeah. going to be again postponed. Well, hopefully, hopefully not. I mean, that's the the schedule is for the end of July. So um, yeah, until the last week of July, first week of August. So hopefully, hopefully. But can you imagine the crucible without audience? No, no, I can't. It's like can't because I mean that's what that's what makes the crucible so special. You know, is the audience, the atmosphere, the electricity. You know. It's, can it's you imagine? You play in the final best of 35 and there is no people. Oh, no, that would be horrible, horrible. It would be horrible. Just, but, but I don't know what the restrictions will be then. You know, it might, things might change. They might change rapidly. So, uh, But I, I can't imagine a world championship without crowd. But if, if it does go ahead, then, you know, so be it. I'd rather to see a world championship go ahead than not have one at all. Yeah, it's like too, too, too big occasion. Yeah. Yeah, too big occasion. Yeah. So, what are the plans? Of, of course, there's going to be a World Snooker Championship. So, when the new season, if everything is going to be, is going to start? Like what? Uh, what well, I think as, as soon as they, if they, if they can finish this World Championship in August, um, I think we'd be raring to go back in September. You know, so uh, with with some tournaments, I don't, I don't know about going to China before Christmas. Maybe some of those Chinese tournaments might be have to be put off till put off till next year you know and uh wait and see but but definitely uh i think uh, i think it, it, we could be uh be able to play the season back in september you know i heard the uh, news that it could be uh, an event in Saudi arabia oh yes yeah yeah definitely yeah there's one uh, well they have a they've signed a 10 year deal in saudi arabia for uh, for a tournament there uh, and I'm not quite sure when it's going to take place, maybe October, November sometime. But that's going to be the richest tournament, I think, outside the World Championship. It's going to have half a million uh, the, for the, the most, most prize money. Yeah. It's great. I think the, these days when you have many tournaments until the Corona, like uh, players are more happy than like uh, back in 2010 when there were six events, seven events per year. Yeah. Oh, no, I, I mean, these days now is so much better, you know, so much better. So, can, uh, can you tell me about your future plans? How, what you, do you have any plans for the, what you want to accomplish as a person, as a player, like? Uh, well, look, I, I still like, as I said, I still love playing. And uh, I still want to keep playing and still, still want to win things, you know, there's no doubt about that. Yeah. Still going to, uh, you know, work for the uh, work for the BBC, but also uh, 
I still, still things I want to achieve in the game. There's no doubt about that. And of course, even you know, if I have to play in the seniors as well, there's things I want to win on that as well. But I think mainly on the main tour force, concentrate on that, and then the seniors will always come after that. Okay, Ken. Thank you for the talk. Um, so it was Willy Schulteber from the Snooker Pro Club, and uh, he was a world champion, Ken Doherty. It was an uh, insightful, uh, amazing talk. And uh, hopefully we can talk about uh, next time about other things. Yeah, absolutely. Yeah, yeah. And and good luck with your coaching and your club there. I hope uh, one day we can we can get over there and have a game. Of course, we're gonna have some. Uh, do you know PJ Nolan? Like PJ. Yeah, PJ Nolan. Yeah, I know PJ. Yeah. I was I was uh, once at his uh, club and we had some sessions like two years ago. Yeah, very so, good. So so I was good coach. I was I was in Dublin and uh, a beautiful city. I enjoyed uh, the way it looked like. So hopefully oh, I will. Okay, fantastic, fantastic. I will look and you keep practicing, uh, keep coaching, and uh, hopefully we'll uh, see you next time. See you next time, Ken. Okay, Thanks. Bye bye. Care. Thank you. Take care. Bye bye.